Just a few announcements. Um, this coming week is a church conference. It's on Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30, and it will be online. I haven't gotten the link yet, but they promise they'll send it to me be before then, and I'll share it with all of you. Everyone is welcome to participate in church conference. Um, November 1st, we'll be having a drive-in communion again. And it's also All Saints Day, so invite your family, friends, and neighbors to, to come worship with you. Bring their cars, turn, their, turn the radio on, and um, then um, we will worship together, even if it's separate in our cars. Um, West River Center is still providing the meals. It's the same choices from Wednesday on, but... It's going to change, I guess, by Sunday when this is, when you're hearing this. But it, like we said, it's delicious. Many of us have tried it. So um, check that out. It's on, on your announcements in your uh, bulletin-ish kind of thing. Good morning, everyone. This is Dave Loftus with more birthdays and anniversaries. We don't have any anniversaries this week, but we do have three birthdays. Brenna Kajeski. Mary Hansky, and Bill Woodfield. So let's sing happy birthday to them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jesus loves you. Happy birthday to you. Okay, thank you everyone. I'll see you again next week with more birthdays and anniversaries. Please join me in the call to worship. Though there are rulers, presidents, kings, queens, God is the Lord of all life. In God we live and move and have our being. God requires our faithfulness and our service. We reach out to others with the same kind of love with which God has touched our lives. Come, let us worship the Lord who is always with us. Let us praise God who walks daily by our side. 
Amen. too much with us, we turn to you for consolation and healing. Help us today to hear your words of compassion. Enable us to be those who would willingly serve all people in need. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. At this time, we'll lift up our joys and remember those that need our prayers. I don't think I have anyone new for this week. Um, I did get Kathleen's name, the secretary at Franklin United Methodist that, that had a stroke, so we want to keep her in our prayers. And then all the folks at uh, St. Matthew's and Franklin that tested positive for, for COVID. That's why the uh, food giveaway was canceled last week, so. Let's, let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we enter these gates with thanksgiving and praise. Many of us have come with burdens seeking your healing. Others have come with joys celebrating the goodness and blessings that abound. Each one is welcome here. We know that there's much work to be done in this world. Injustice, greed, isolation, alienation, all exist when we have forgotten to be your people of peace. Lord, this week we especially lift up in prayer Allison McKim, Robin Brucker, and Pauline Brady, and all those that are on our list. Uh, Shirley got to talk to Nancy this week, and all is well, and Lois Shekels is, is holding her own in Florida. As we have spoken the names of people who are dear to us seeking prayers for their needs, let us remember to be faithfully working for you in all that we do. Help us to give to you our complete faithfulness. Teach us to be good citizens of your kingdom here on earth. Be with us as we go from this place, for we ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to say as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi guys, we are halfway through another month, the month of October. And October's theme is October's chapter 10 and its theme is be true to yourself. Don't be afraid to live your life as a Christian and don't change who you are based on who is around you. This is easier said than done, especially in the teenage years, especially at the age you guys are right now. Everyone's trying to fit in. Everyone's trying to be part of a group. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, who am I trying to please? Am I trying to change myself just to fit in with these people or these friends? And the verse for today is from Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, and it kind of asks the same question. It says, am I now trying to win the approval of men or God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of God. So basically, we should be trying to please God first, above all, above anyone. Well, many of us are people pleasers. We want everyone to like us. We want everyone to think that we're a nice person or think that we're funny. We just like to blend into the crowd. We don't want to open ourselves up in a way that might make people think that mm, they're weird. We live in a world where approval matters. When people post things on Instagram or on Snapchat or Facebook, it's really a lot about wanting likes and wanting people to tell us how great or how funny we are. The problem is there will always be people who don't think we're that great or that funny. And sometimes it's for reasons that we really don't understand which is why we need to remind ourselves that the only approval we really need comes from God. Nobody knows you like God knows you. And since God is the one, the only one that knows us inside and out, his approval is the one that matters the most. So what will help you overcome the fear of what others think of you is really asking God to help you find true security that can only come from him which means knowing who you are in Christ and what he has done for you and that you are so dearly loved.
chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Thessalonians church that is in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to all of you. We always thank God for all of you when we mention you constantly in our prayers. This is because we remember your work that comes from faith, your effort that comes from love, and your perseverance that comes from hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Father. Brothers and sisters, you are loved by God, and we know that he has chosen you. We know this because our good news didn't come to you just in speech, but also with power and the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. You know as well as we do what kind of people we were when we were with you, which was for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord when you accepted the message that came from the Holy Spirit with joy in spite of great suffering. As a result, you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The message about the Lord rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place. The news about your faithfulness to God has spread, so we don't even need to mention it. People tell us about what sort of welcome we had from you and how you turned to God from idols. As a result, you are serving the living and true God, and you are waiting for his Son from heaven. His Son is Jesus, who is the one he raised from the dead, and who is the one who will rescue us from the coming wrath. Our Gospel lesson this morning is from Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees met together to find a way to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples along with the supporters of Herod to him. Teacher, they said, we know that you are genuine and that you teach God's way as it really is. We know that you are not swayed by people's opinions because you don't show favoritism. So tell us what you think. Does the law allow people to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Knowing their evil motives, Jesus uh, replied, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that you use to pay the tax. And they brought him a denarian. Whose image and inscription is this, he asked? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. When they heard this, they were astonished, and they departed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. And Jesus said, show me the money. Well, you can find it in today's gospel reading, but actually he said, show me the coin. So to get into our text, let's talk about coins. The first national coin was minted in 1776, fully authorized by the Continental Congress. Look at a typical American coin today and you'll see the words liberty and in God we trust. So what's in your wallet? What does your money say to you? What the coin said to Jesus was, Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. There's certainly a lot of meaning to be found in money. Jesus knows that money is a major factor in the shaping of lives, and he focuses on it a great deal in his ministry. In fact, his focus on money is second only to him talking about the kingdom of God. For Jesus, money is used to pay taxes to the emperor, but also to advance God's world. Money is never an end to itself, a treasure to be socked away. What would be the point of that? You're going to die long before you spend it all, and you can't take it with you. The meaning of money it's, is that it's an asset and a resource for us to put to work in the world. If you listen carefully, your money is saying, use me. It's true that we have to give some coins to the emperor. Death and taxes have been two of life's certainties, at least since the time of Jesus. But beyond this, we have a great deal of freedom to exercise in the use of our assets. And it's good for us to learn how to be generous with the money that we have. So what's in your wallet? What's it saying to you? And how are you going to use it? People will give generously when they believe that there's an important mission at work and when they see real opportunities to advance God's interests in the world. This requires being clear about the mission and ministry of the church and adding concrete details to the invitation of Jesus to give to God the things that are God's. People will give with boldness and generosity when they see mission projects that heal the sick and liberate the oppressed at home and abroad. Christian education programs that shape the hearts and minds of children and adults and worship services that glorify God and uplift the people and fellowship activities, boy do I miss those, that move people from isolation to community and from casual acquaintance to deep spiritual friendship. These are all opportunities to advance God's interests in the world and to serve the Lord of love and generosity by living lives of love and generosity. So take a look at a typical American coin and you'll see the words liberty and in God we trust. The phrase in God we trust challenges us to rely on our good and gracious God and to believe that he will care for us in the future, just as he has cared for us in the past. The word liberty reminds us that we are free to be generous in our giving as faithful stewards of great abundance that the Lord has given us. In a loving and generous God we trust, with liberty to support God's work in the world. That's the meaning of money. Amen. Next, we'll hear from Rob Carter, who served Galesville 40 years ago. Wow, thank you, Rob members and friends of Galesville United Methodist Church. I'm Rob Carter. I was a pastor there from uh, June 1st, 1977 to June 30th, 1980. And I've been asked to share uh, some memories about Galesville and I am uh, honored to do that. I uh, went there to preach 
oh, some years ago at a homecoming or a anniversary of some sort, something like that. And I use as my text that Sunday uh, from Exodus 3, the story of God speaking to Moses through the burning bush. And one of the first things God says to Moses is, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. And that pretty well expresses how I feel about Galesville. That was my point that day, that we all should take off our shoes because Galesville is holy ground. But it, it, it continues to the way I feel about it now. Um, it was the it was my first place. It was the first place I started out. The first place people called me pastor. The first place that Carolyn got to be the pastor's wife, and and uh, you know first baptism and wedding and funeral. The first very special to me is the first time I served communion as the pastor without some supervisor uh, assisting me or guiding me or evaluating me. And. Uh, it's 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 holy ground for me for me and mine, and I rem, I remember Galesville very very fondly. When I uh, go to talk about this, though, I'm going to have to talk about people. I'm going to have to name names. I uh, I believe that ministry is a, a matter of relationship, and it's about people. Uh, what I'll remember from Galesville isn't so much programs or anything like that. It'll, it'll be the um, the people there. And so I have to say who they are, and I can't mention them all, and I know that there's an inherent risk there that, that I'll leave somebody out that was important, and I almost certainly will because so many people were important. But I'm going I'm to mention a few anyway. I went to seminary in, in Atlanta, Georgia, and was that, during my last year there was when I was uh, appointed to, uh, to Galesville, and I couldn't come back up to do the customary meeting with the Pastor Parish Relations Committee, as we called it at the time, and, and get acquainted and, and get a tour of the building and let them ask me questions and I asked them questions and that's a, just didn't get any of that. So my first uh, time setting foot on the premises of Galesville was the first time I was scheduled to preach there as their pastor. And that Sunday morning I was ready to go. I had been uh, looking forward to this day since I was in high school, since I got my call to ministry. And, and all those years of work and preparation, and now I was ready to go. Uh, and so I showed up like two hours early, and there was nobody there. The building was open, fortunately, as it always was, and maybe still is. And uh, I was able to get inside, and I just kind of got to experience the place. I didn't plan it that way, but that's what happened. I just experienced the place. But while I was looking around and, and, and walking around and thinking about it, uh, the first person to arrive was Alton Leatherberry. I'm sure many of you remember Alton, even though he's been gone for some time. And uh, Alton and I had a great conversation that day as we got, as we got acquainted. And uh, I remember at one point he started getting kind of uh, pointed in his questions. And I had the feeling that he'd come prepared and that he came early that Sunday because he thought I might be there early uh, for my first Sunday at my first church. Uh, but I, you know, I had a lot of good conversations with Alton. I enjoyed knowing him very much, and, and because he was the first Galesville person, I thought it appropriate to mention today. Another person I remember from that first uh, Sunday is uh, Jack Smith. Uh, Jack was chair of the Pastor Parish Relations Committee, and uh, I talked to him a couple of times on the phone as we uh, made arrangements or, or, or whatever that may be. But. Um, I'd never met him until that first Sunday, but I, uh, the parsonage wasn't available to us when, when, uh, when we were there for the first Sunday. I think we moved probably the following week. But uh, so Jack thought it would be a hospitable thing to do to, to welcome, us, welcome me into his house for, uh, for lunch after the service. And uh, as we were getting in the car and getting ready to go, uh, he looked at me very seriously and he says, now don't be thinking you're going for fried chicken and string beans. This is lunch. We're just going to have sandwiches. And uh, I, I, I smile as I remember that even now and often as I, as I think about that. Uh, it was okay, of course, but um, uh, that was Jack. And Jack just uh, would, would tell you what the story was and what, what the facts were, uh, but he could do it and make you laugh at the same time. Uh, when I went to Jack's house, I met his wife, uh, Marie, who uh, was the person who, who did the bulletins while I was there. And uh, she, she did them by uh, typing on a mimeograph stencil from whatever I gave her written by hand, believe it or not. 
and uh, I would pick up on Friday the uh, the stencil from her, and I would take it, and I'd be the one to run it off at the church uh, on the church mimeograph. And I could tell you stories about that mimeograph too, but um, I'm trying to keep things positive because that was definitely a, a difficult relationship. I also uh, want, want to mention uh, Roberta Casar. Roberta was the worship chair when I was there, and she was uh, also a good friend of Carolyn and mine. And um, but. It, it was the best working relationship I think I had with a, a worship chair during in my 40 years. We did some really great stuff at Galesville in those years, especially for special services like Monday, Thursday, and, and such as that. And um, it was stuff that was good enough for me to try to emulate it or copy it or adapt it to every, almost every future appointment I ever I ever served. So. Um, so I, I remember working with her, but she was also a, a, a personal friend, and uh, I remember she was very excited about the um, impending birth of, of our son Matthew at the time. Of course, we didn't know that it was going to be a son in, in those days, but uh, one of the things Roberta did uh, was that she brought a needle to choir rehearsal one night, a needle and a thread, and she dangled the needle by the thread over Carolyn's arm, and if it went side to side, it went one thing, and it went circle, it went another, and uh, the difference would, of course, be whether it was a boy or a girl, and I don't remember which one was supposed to be which, but I do remember, I, I believe, that she was right about it, and, and uh, she predicted boy, and, uh, and Matt, well, our son Matt was uh, born in December of 79. And uh, so she was right, and she was pretty happy with that. Okay. I also remember, related to, to Matt's birth, that we had been talking and kidding about how I was going to let people know and that the baby was born. And uh, we, we eventually, kind of jokingly, decided we would, I'd put a bow on the front door of the parsonage, uh, pink for a girl and blue for a, a boy. And uh, when I came back from the hospital, I dutifully put it on the door. But um, Roberta told the story of driving down Church Lane and not, not looking over at the parsonage and then uh, passing by and, not, uh, and seeing that there was something but not knowing what it was. And she went and called Betsy Derrick, who lived across the street from us, to ask. If, and Betsy said, oh, I haven't even noticed. I haven't even looked over there yet. So it wasn't a perfect system, but it, it, did, uh, you know, it, was, it was some fun. So I also should mention William Woodfield. William and Grace, his, his wife, uh, he, they were very good to Carolyn and me and uh, supportive. Uh, and I remember one night, uh, he was the administrative council chair, and he, uh, I called him up to uh, ask him a question or arrange a date for something, you know, some triviality. And I was, it was, it was a little, it was nine, maybe a little after when I called, and I immediately knew that I, I'd woken him up when I called, and uh, and I said, oh, I'm sorry, did I wake you up? And he said, yeah, yeah, I go to bed really early. He said, but he, he was gracious enough to go ahead and deal with what I'd called him about since I dra dragged him out of bed for it, and he, uh, and he didn't seem to hold it against me, and they, you know, he took took us to the Navy football games and did various kinds of. Uh, 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 generous things with us, took us to dinner and stuff like that. And I remember William and Grace very, very fondly. Um, there are other people, of course, I could mention and, and perhaps uh, should mention, but uh, you know, time is a, is a factor in this. And I, I do want you to know that if I didn't mention somebody you would like to have me mention, I probably remember them just as fondly. And and, uh, and, and I regret too that I wasn't able to, able to mention them. But uh, I do feel the need to go on and, and, and mention a lifelong friendship that came out of our time at Galesville with Harold and Shirley Day. Um, somehow, we kind of became part of their family. We were about the same age as their kids, and they started inviting us to their house and, and doing stuff with us. And we would go out to dinner together. They'd come to the parsonage and, and do us. We'd play games and cards. and and all, all kinds of things that really had nothing to do with church or my being their pastor or Carolyn being their pastor's wife, and just the way friends um, get together and, and do things. And we asked them to be godparents to our, uh, our son Matthew, and even after we left Galesville, we asked them to be godparents to um, Melissa and Melanie, who were born uh, while we were in Dunkirk. 
And uh, that relationship uh, kept the friendship going for over 40 years now and, and still going. Uh, I, I was uh, honored to do uh, part of the funeral for, for Harold a, a few years ago. And um, uh, we still speak to Shirley. I saw her a couple of times this summer and uh, she spoke at my retirement and ser service and um, we're, you know, we continue to be continue to be good good friends so that friendship has just been ongoing and continues even to this day so it's just a pretty good example of how the way I feel about Galesville I've always been tied to Galesville from the very first day and it's a very special place indeed it is holy ground and um, I, I am reminded and identify with this Apostle Paul who who wrote to the Philippians, I thank God every time I remember you. And that's a pretty good description about how I feel about Galesville. And so I wish you the best. I pray that for your future ministry and, and have a good homecoming celebration. And I hope to see you again sometime. Goodbye.